1960, the Britannia Pier, was when one day this beautiful uh, ice blue MGBGT was delivered to him. And it was a car he loved to pieces. He, and it was a lovely car. And he used it for the latter part of the season. And once the season had finished, we went back to London. And at the time, Billy, Joe and myself were sharing uh, a building in Paddington where Billy and, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, where Joe and his mum and his brother Pete were living in the basement. I was on the first floor and Billy was on the second floor. And Mrs. Brown, who was just such a lovely lady, a real cool blimey, she was a lovely lady, used to feed us often, we'd go down. And Joe and I had done a week at the Metropole in Glasgow and we had discovered this fantastic fish and chip shop and we had it probably two or three times in the week we had fish and chips. And uh, Joe just turned to me and said, whoa, I could do with some of those fish and chips from Glasgow, couldn't you? I said, well, that'd be great, wouldn't it? He said, well, you better make your minds up. This is Joe's money. You better make your minds up what you want because I'm going to do some cooking. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, Billy and I will go and get some fish and chips. So Billy and I went out. We got into Billy's car. I said, where are we going? I said, let's go to Glasgow. So we drove up to Glasgow in 1960, yeah. We drove up to Lairsgo in 1960. Uh, it was about September time. And uh, we went to the fish and chip shop that Joe and I had used the week before, we bought the fish and chips, got a daily newspaper with the, the date on it, wrapped them in, and went back to London with the fish and chips, which was, of course, now stone cold, and nobody ate, but we just did it for the hell of it. And that was in Billy's MGBGT. Uh, then we all went back <coughs> to the Midland Hotel in Manchester prior to flying back to London the next morning. And uh, Marty and I shared a room. Larry was normally on his own or with a friend. Uh, and then there was Chris Reynolds, who was the PR guy, the press relations, public relations guy. Uh, he, was, he was with us as well. So we went to the bar when we arrived at the hotel, having checked in. I didn't drink, Marty didn't drink. <clears throat> Larry was a very liberal drinker. I don't, Billy didn't drink, so it was only Chris Reynolds was having a few mobbins and we were with Cokes or orange juice talking. Then Marty and I decided, because it was an early flight the next morning, we'd go to bed. So we went to bed, and uh, we had a twin-bedded room, as we usually did when we shared. And uh, we decided, because of our experiences with Larry, to have a bit of fun. So Marty made out he was Billy, and I made out I was Larry, and I chased him around the bedroom. And we were bouncing from bed to bed, and then I picked up... Uh, uh, a bedside table light because that's what I'd used to defend myself against Larry about six months earlier and threw it down and we had this great fun chasing around the bedroom and we just crashed out we went to bed and that was it and the following morning we went down for breakfast and there was a big table there for five people with Chris at it our PR guy and we was expecting Larry possibly to join us so we sat down only to see on the far side of the restaurant in the corner was Larry and Billy so Chris Reynolds, our PR guy, said, you guys are in big trouble. We said, why? And before he could answer, the waiter comes up and tells Marty to go and see Larry. By now, Billy was walking out the restaurant, and Marty sits down with Larry. And you can see all this going on and pointing fingers, and Larry looking very irate towards Marty. And I'm trying to find out from Chris what's happening, and he won't tell me. And the next thing is Marty gets up, comes across to me at the table, and as he sits down, he said, wow, are we in big trouble? I said, oh, God, now what? He said, Larry wants to see you. So I went across to Larry, and he said, last night, when you and Marty had gone to bed, I had a drink with Chris and Billy, and we came to bed later, and I had forgotten my key, the key to the room which was directly opposite yours. So I came to your room, to see if you'd be so kind as to phone down to the reception to get them to bring a key up to save me going down. And I overheard you and Marty belittling me and pulling me to pieces and being innuendous or some such word. And I object to that. And so for that reason, I'm selling Marty's contract because I've been offered £80,000 for it. And as for you, you're finished in the business. And what do you say to that? I said, oh, you can't defend it because you did it. You know, it's up to him. So very disgruntled and... and, and Concerned, I went back to the breakfast table with Chris and he was just smirking and laughing. He said, I told you you're in big trouble, didn't I? <laughs> Billy 
was uh, a very keen airfix played uh, builder. And Larry had this massive, just to cost a fortune, marble top Italian style table, which was great for two things, playing scale electrics, of which we had one, or which we always played, and also to build airfix kits and that sort of thing. It was great. So Billy did a lot of building of airfix kits. But once he'd finished them, he had about 60 or 70 at one stage. It was unbelievable. And the balcony from the apartment overlooked Gloucester Road below. And Billy decided one night to have a bit of fun and he got his lighter, cigarette lighter, and I didn't realise how inflammable these things were, but he just set fire to them and threw them off the third floor balcony onto Gloucester Road. And, had a little, and, and Billy had this very, it was girlish in a way, but he used to giggle going, <laughs> always laugh with his tongue between his teeth, <laughs> look at that laugh. Very, very girly, but it was anything that was girly about him. The rest was very masculine. But he used to do this, and it was fun. And we did that. And the other one he did off the balcony was when uh, we had a, we both had an argument with Larry. Larry had a great collection of 78 RPM records in his big uh, sound centre. And, and Billy took them out and proceeded to throw them like flying saucers off the balcony towards the buses that were going up and down plus 